Today, we're building something super fun. We're building a tabletop two-player foosball game. We're gonna combine some basic woodworking with a bunch of 3D printed parts to make this really simple build that is gonna be a ton of fun to play. I've already planned out the whole build. I've 3D printed all the necessary parts, everything from the players to the handles and even the goals. And if you wanna build one of these for yourself, I'll have all the plans and all the 3D files available to download from my website, which is alch.shop. Now, the first thing that we'll do is build the frame that is gonna hold all the parts. We'll build that out of 19 millimeter plywood or three quarter inch for you guys that live in the States. There's really not a lot of parts to this whole build. It's basically just a box with some structure in it. So we'll need four pieces for the big frame. And then we're gonna rip a bunch of strips that are gonna become the support that the play surface is gonna rest on. All right, let's jump right into it and start assembling these pieces into the frame. We'll need to drill some holes in the side pieces for where the rods are gonna stick through. And we'll need to make some space in the ends for where the goal will sit. Now I've already planned all this out with measurements and I've marked those onto the pieces. So now I know exactly where to drill those holes and what parts I need to cut out. So first things first, let's jump over on the bandsaw and cut these out. And with a few simple cuts, that's most of the hard work done. Now I've also cut out a couple of slots in these pieces that will allow these parts to fit together. Now a bunch of these will now make the bottom framework that is gonna hold everything in place. I've cut these parts on the bandsaw, but you could just as easily also cut everything just with the jigsaw. So these parts go together like so, and we can get a general idea of how big this thing is gonna be. Now all we have to do is add some glue, drill some holes and screw in some screws so that this entire framework it's a nice solid base that we can attach all the other parts to. And as you can see, I've also drilled holes in the sides. This is where the rods with the players are gonna stick through at the end. Well, is it just me or does this thing start to look like an actual foosball table? Now you'll notice that it's actually a fair bit smaller than a standard sized foosball table. The biggest difference is that instead of four sticks on each side that has players on it, on this one, there's three. And yes, you might ask yourself, why three on each side and not just two? We have two hands, so it would make more sense to just play with two. I want it to be a bit more interesting, so you'd actually have to switch hands from defending and attacking and make the game a bit more fun rather than just having the two sticks that you hold on to all the time. Now, with that explanation out of the way, there's one more key difference that we need to talk about. And that is what style of foosball table this actually is. There's two main different types of tables. Now, the first one has a completely flat playing surface. That means that the players need to reach every single place on the whole surface. And that's why those types of games usually have three players all the way in the back here. One acting as the goalie and the two on the side to catch the ball if it rolls back here. Now the other style and the style that I actually prefer and the one I'm gonna build here only has one player in the back acting as the goalie. And to make sure that the ball doesn't get stuck back here, there's a slight elevation in the back corner, so if the ball rolls that way, it will slowly roll back. That's also why there's nothing in the corner here currently. We're gonna add a slight slope on the inside here as soon as we've attached all these parts. Now, another benefit in doing it this way is that instead of having three players in the back, you only need one acting as the goalie. So all in all, we save four players, which means a bunch less 3D printing. All right, let's just repeat that previous process. I'll add a bunch of glue, make sure everything is square, screw where possible, and in the very visible parts, I'll use some brad nails. All right, the frame is done, and the next step is to deal with these corners. Now, like I said, I want there to be a slight slope going up towards the edges. And for that, I made a couple of these pieces. I made these by cutting out some templates that I printed out earlier to get with the plants. I can then trace out these shapes onto the piece of plywood and then cut them out with the bandsaw. A little bit of sanding later, these things look really nice like that. Now, if I place these in the corner here, you can get a better understanding of how all this is gonna look. As you can see, there's a slight slope, and to demonstrate that, I'll just use this piece of leftover wood here. I'll jam that in the corner, and now I can use a ball, place it in the corner here, and you can see that it rolls back just like the big professional tables. I'm using this thin material because I'm gonna use the same material to make the base later. That way, this entire build only needs a thin sheet of plywood like four mil and a bit of 19 mil to make everything else. Nice and simple. So a bit of glue, jam them in the corner. 
I'll do that to all four quarters and then we can deal with the top surface. I'm gonna make that plain surface out of a four millimeter sheet of plywood. However, this stuff doesn't really look that nice. So I'm lucky enough that I've got a leftover piece of linoleum. This is the same material that I used as the top surface for my office desk. So all I have to do is glue this stuff onto this sheet of plywood. I'm gonna do that with some contact cement. All right, dry to the touch. Let's try and get these two stuck together. Oh. And after a bit of trimming, this is what we're left with. Now, the question is, does this whole thing fit? And indeed it does. Now, we're obviously left with a problem, and that is we need some way to hold all these down. One way would be to shoot a bunch of nails through here, which I really don't want to do because I think it's going to disturb the playing surface. What I'm going to do instead, and what the bigger foosball tables do, is that I've cut a bunch of strips. I'm gonna screw onto the side here and to make sure that the curve in the corner is the right one. I've got a couple of more templates. I'll cut out these templates and again, trace that shape onto the bottom of these sticks. I'll do that to all four corners and then we'll shape those corners to match our templates. All right, all the bits and pieces are cut out. I've sanded them nice and smooth. I've also sanded the surfaces. Now it's time to see if these actually fit. Now these curvatures should match the ones that are underneath. And if I push these down properly, hey, that doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it works. And it's definitely starting to look like a proper foosball table. I'll get these attached, just a few drops of glue and some brad nails properly attached down. By the way, I'm using 23 gauge brad nails and they're just awesome. The heads are barely visible. Look at that. That's basically the entire frame done. Now the last bit that we need to attach to this before we can start on the players is the goals. Now let me tell you, there's a lot of 3D printed parts in this project, but this thing was something else. This is a bit over a full spool of filament, about 800 grams each. And I had to print two of them. There's a lot of support in these. But we get to break it out, which is fun. And now this is the reason why I don't like printing supports, because all of this is just wasted. I mean, I'll save these. Maybe I can do something cool with them in the future. <coughs> all right, let's see how this thing fits. Let's go in between here and hopefully nicely line up with everything. Now, although that looks really good, there's one problem left, and that is the ball just pops right back out. That is because there's a straight wall behind here. Don't worry, we've got a way to fix that. But first, <laughs> a quick edge for today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators, where you can learn new skills, deepen existing passion, or get lost in creativity. They've got classes in basically anything you've ever wanted to learn. Either it's 3D modeling, video editing, or woodworking. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads and they're always launching new premium content, meaning that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Now, one class that I'm really interested in is Thomas Frank's class on productivity for creatives, build a system that brings out the best. Now, I think that's gonna be a really good one. Now, you better be quick, because the first thousand of my subscribers that click the link in my description below will get one month free of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. In the back here, I've got some holes, and those holes are gonna be for a steel plate. I just had some scrap steel laying around that I cut out with a jigsaw right in the corner so it nicely fits on the inside of the goal. I'll drill some holes in this thing so we can put some bolts through. Those bolts are then gonna go into these holes, which we're gonna have to drill out and tap properly, screw everything together, and then we're left with this thing. Now. The steel plate is at an angle, so hopefully when the ball goes in, it will go down and then roll out to this collection thingy so you can grab it from there. Now the question is, why didn't I just print this whole part with that angle in there? And here's the reason why. With that steel plate, you get a really satisfying sound, sort of confirming that you scored that goal. Now this really bit the part has some ready to go holes on the inside here for screws. 
setting on the bottom, then all that's left is the other side. And to make the whole thing look really nice, I also applied a nice coat of oil on all the wooden bits. Frame is completely done with two goals. The next step is the guys that are gonna actually be playing. Now we're gonna attach those to some 60 millimeters bars. Now, obviously these things are way too long at the moment. They're also galvanized and have this sort of rough surface finish. So let's cut these to size, get them all cleaned up. I think I'll end up sanding them a little bit and try and get that surface nice and smooth. And then we'll need to do some holes for the players. All right, with the rods nice, smooth and polished, ready to move on to the next step because I've actually 3D printed all the players. Now the question is whether or not these things will be strong enough. I think they will be. They're printed basically solid, but I got one more trick to try and make these a little bit more sturdy. So the way they mount to these rods is with one of these really big bolts that goes in the bottom of the player. Align everything and then hopefully with a bit of wiggling back and forth, huh? that screw will then go all the way through the player, giving it some nice extra rigidity through the rod. And to lock everything in place, I've got one of these square nuts that will fit into here, attach everything together, and we've got our player attached to the rod. But like I said, I'm not really sure how well these are gonna work. So the rod are a standard 60 mil size. If you wanna build one of these and you don't like the 3D printed players, you can go ahead and purchase any of the other ones. Just make sure the holes that you drill match with the standard players. All right, now the last step is attaching these to the frame. Now you might notice that the holes that we drilled in the frame are quite a bit larger than these small tubes. And that is because I'm gonna use some sleeves or bearings as these things are called to hold everything nice and centered and make sure that the motion is nice and smooth. But here's the thing. Originally, I wasn't sure if PLA was gonna be smooth enough or durable enough to act as the bearing surface. So I purchased these things. These are really nice Teflon sleeves. They're meant to be a bearing surface and these things are supposed to go in here. These two parts then go on either side of the frame that we built, click together, everything gets screwed in place, and you end up with a really nice and smooth bearing surface. Now I also wanted to try just printing out these parts to be the bearing surface themselves, so that you don't need to purchase any extra parts, just print out these things. And that is exactly what I've done here. I've test assembled both the different types of bearings, the white ones have the nice Teflon sleeves and the orange one just has the 3D printed bearing surfaces out of PLA, just like everything else here. Now here's the thing, the Teflon one is quite smooth and pretty nice, but so is the orange one. It's a bit more noisy, but it spins quite easily. Actually, it spins a bit more freely than this one. And in terms of how are they to play with, they're actually both pretty similar. Both feel fine. So you know what? For the sake of making this as easy as possible, I'll just use the 3D printed bearings. And if they don't last over a long period of time, I can either print new ones or I can switch to these Teflon bearings. That way there's also less random parts that you need to buy if you wanna make one of these. All right, these ones were just a test. I'll switch these out with the proper ones. I'll switch out all the bearing surfaces with the 3D printed ones. The slide bits are on, it's time to install all the parts. Now there is an order at which we have to assemble all these parts so that it actually fit. We'll start by inserting these rods. And then the first thing that we'll have to put on this rod is a bumper so that they don't bang into the sides when we're playing. Now for that, I'm actually just gonna use some of these rubber feet. Now yes, the hole in these isn't even slightly big enough. So with the drill, I'm gonna drill that hole out to be a bit bigger like that. And then with one of these locking ring pliers, we're just gonna stretch it out a bit and try and finesse this thing over the end of the tube. Ah, bit of Windex to make it nice and slippery. Slide it down. Next up is a locking ring to make sure that the whole thing doesn't fall out if you pull too hard. That thing should also just slide over the shaft. Obviously, we need the two players. Next up, the whole process in reverse. First locking ring, then our DIY bumper. Slide everything in place, adjust everything to the proper precision. And the last step is attaching the handle that just bolts on with one bolt and a nut on the back side. And then we're left with the first fully functional set of players. <laughs> and just like that, I'll repeat that process with all the rows of players, attach all the handles, make sure that everything is in the right place. <laughs> That's it. I mounted some rubber feet at the bottom so the thing doesn't move around when you play really violently. 
I've also attached a point scoring system so you can see how many points you beat your opponents with or how many you lose by. All in all, I'm really happy with the way it looks, but that doesn't mean anything. It's time to actually put it to the test. All right, let's see if this works. Oh! <laughs> much fun and this thing actually works. I barely managed to win over my girlfriend with just one point. But all you know, this thing is just super fun to play with. At least I can comfort myself that I managed to win over Lucian with a couple more points. And even though there's only three sticks on each side, that seems to work just fine. The only thing slightly strange about it is that my center stick is on the right side instead of the left side when you start but you can definitely get used to that. Now the goal with the steel plate mostly works just fine. Maybe one out of 10 times the ball bounces back out, but I don't think there's much I can do with it without increasing the overall size of the thing. Now I'll also make sure to upload a version of the goals without the steel plate so the angle is printed in in case you don't want to do any metalworking. And I've also realized that these steel collets are only necessary on the back one with the goalie. On all the other rows, this could just be a printed plastic piece. So that also makes it a bit easier to make this thing. I'll make sure to include all those changes in the plans. If you want to build one of these, you can go to alch.shop. There you can also find a bunch of other build plans and 3D files from my previous project. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'm going to go back to playing a little bit more.